We have long thought that Florida State and the Big Ten will be an expansion match made in heaven. But there's been some talk recently about Florida State and Clemson joining the Big 12 instead. We think that that makes no sense whatsoever. We'll tell you why. Locked on Big Ten starts right now. You are locked on Big Ten, your daily podcast on the Big Ten Conference. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to Locked On Big Ten. I'm Craig Scheman. Coming up on 40 years as a sports talk show host and a play-by-play announcer. And I want to thank you for making us your first listen each and every day. We're free and available wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code Locked On for twenty dollars off your first purchase. We're gonna look at the truth behind conference realignment. Plus, take a look at some other schools, and we've been doing season previews. Indiana and Purdue, with all this expansion, these bigger, better teams coming in. Can little schools like this compete? We'll look at their upcoming seasons. But there were comments made this last week by Yahoo's Ross Dellinger about Florida State and Clemson joining the Big 12 and not the Big 10 or the SEC. That doesn't make any sense. Uh, as you everydayers know here on Lockdown Big 10, you know it is our position that those schools, in particular for Florida State, uh, they'll leave the ACC either when their current lawsuit trying to untangle themselves from their long-term media rights deal versus the ACC concludes, or if and when a settlement is reached in that deal. They will eventually join the Big Ten or maybe the SEC, but I don't think the Big 12. Now, Dillinger indicated on a podcast that it was his opinion that Florida State was talking to the Big 12. A lot of other outlets like Sports Illustrated, they all ran with this, like wildfire late last week. Maybe you saw some of it. Let's tap the brakes on all of it. Let's put some perspective in place for everybody here. First of all, Dellinger did not cite a single source. He just said it was his opinion that conversations between Florida State and the Big 12 were taking place. Now, I have no doubt that at some point, even recently, that Florida State has talked to the Big 12 and the Big 10 and the SEC. They have to do their due diligence. When they're done with this lawsuit, one way or the other, they're going to have to depart the ACC and they're going to have to have a place to go. So what makes this really interesting is that any school that wants to leave the ACC in time for the 2025 season, next season, they have to state their intentions in writing by August 15th, 2024. That is one month from today. So if there's no legal resolution in the courtroom or some sort of settlement in the next four weeks, Florida State will be stuck in the ACC for at least one more year, and that could be costly. But as of today, we've been given no indication that a settlement is imminent. uh, imminent. Now, I know it's possible. It's very possible. And that could change quickly, I suppose. But a lot of talking heads out there pointed out that Big 12 commissioner, Brett Yormark, and they had their Big 12 media days just last week. And he said at the media days that the Big 12 is still open for business, meaning he is open to adding new teams. And it is assumed that uh, he was talking about Florida State and Clemson at the time. But Yormark has been saying that for over a year, insistently. So the Big 12 conference is open for business. Of course, it just lost its two marquee programs in Texas and Oklahoma as they begin playing the SEC. So certainly adding a brand, some brand names like Florida State and Clemson would help fix that problem. Right now, the Big 12 will tell you with a straight face, by the way, that they're marketing parity across the board. They will tell you that come November, nine of their teams will have a 10% or greater chance of playing in the championship and playing for a conference championship. If that floats your boat, so be it. I like the big boys at the top of the Big 10 myself, but that's just me. So how could it come about that the Big 12 would jump over the Big 10 or maybe the SEC and land one or both of these schools? Well, at first glance, it would seem stupid for Florida State and Clemson to fight tooth and nail to try and get out of this ACC media deal, which pays them pennies on the dollar to jump to another conference like the Big 12, which barely pays its schools more than the ACC deal that they're in now. It makes no sense. 
Of course, the Big Ten and the SEC, they can pay any school two to two and a half times more than they would be getting in the ACC right now. So let's think about this. What could be going on behind the scenes? Because it seems like the Big Ten has been quiet. Maybe all this could be just because the Big Ten hasn't reciprocated any interest in Florida State or Clemson. It's possible. It's possible. Maybe the Big Ten is sticking to their preference of only inviting schools with AAU academic accreditation. We talk about this all the time on this podcast. Uh, right now, every school in the Big Ten has the AAU accreditation, except for Nebraska. Florida State and Clemson do not. Maybe the Big Ten's just laying low right now, for now. Remember a year ago, Tony Petiti, the commissioner, he didn't want to appear to be the conference that was poaching other conferences' schools. He didn't want to make it appear like the Big Ten was the reason the Pac-12 fell apart. He let things play out on the Pac-12 side before inviting USC and Southern Cal to join Washington and Oregon in the Big Ten. It would be very reasonable to think that that's Petiti's management style here, and maybe he's taking the same approach here. It's going to lay low till the 11th hour. We'll see what happens. But maybe that's where Florida State started to feel a little bit of pressure with this looming August 15th deadline coming up. They're, uh, you know, they're soliciting a backup plan quickly in case they come up with a settlement and get out of this ACC deal. Like I said earlier, got to have somewhere to go. Maybe it's all an educated guess at this point. But what about the money? Let's follow the money trail. The money always leaves. Why fight in court to then you know have exit fees of 100 and what 40 million dollars just to go from the ACC to the Big 12 for virtually the same money and again they may have to give up any money that the ACC has rights to up until 2036 i mean it's expensive now we're talking hundreds of millions of dollars here i remind you that CBS reported last month and we reported it here as well that the Big 12 knowing that they need some marquee schools to replace Texas and Oklahoma they may be engineering and partnering partnering uh, a deal with ca a capital venture partner uh, called Luxembourg. That uh, would just give them a, give them a billion dollars. Give the Big Twelve a billion dollars. Here you go. It's a cash infusion. Maybe you can entice Florida State and Clemson with all the expenses. Maybe we'll help you out a little bit if you come over here. In exchange, they give this Luxembourg private equity company a twenty percent share of controlling interest of the Big Twelve. Might not even be called the Big 12 anymore. It might be named after some corporate company at this point. We'll see. You talk about a conference selling its soul to catch up to the Big 10 and the SEC. Dormark says, hey, we are squarely the third best conference right now, but I'm not going to stop to we'll number one. Uh, we're number one. You want to you do this? You want to give up the rights to your conference to bring in a couple of uh, cool schools? They'll get you some attention? I don't know if that business model works. That's crazy talk. But everything's crazy. Just a couple of years ago, all this stuff that has happened in the past couple of years, you couldn't have imagined it. Look, I still think the Big Ten wants a piece of Florida, one way or the other. And I still think that things are mutually best if Florida State joins forces with the Big Ten. However, Florida State may be looking at lesser options right now just in case. And the Big Ten won't sell its soul to anybody right now especially when you got another option or two or three. There are other schools in the ACC, and there are other schools in Florida in the ACC. You want to get into Florida? Take a look at the Miami Hurricanes. Bigger market, right? And they're AAU accredited academically. It's kind of a fit for the Big Ten. So Florida State, I don't know. Maybe, maybe the Big Ten looks at Miami. Maybe that's why they haven't been jumping, bending over backward to accommodate Florida State, if anything is indeed going on behind the scenes right now. So very interesting, very interesting. So for right now, Florida State and Clemson maybe scrambling a little bit if they're looking at this August 15th deadline. Maybe they can let it ride for another year and let cooler heads prevail and come up with a better deal next year. Who knows? I don't know. I don't get the I don't get the feeling though. They're just standing pat, just waiting for things to happen. But the Big Ten is under no pressure here at all. And they just might sit tight and let things play out, but we'll all know a lot more in four weeks on August 15th, or by then, for sure. 
What do you think? We'd love to hear your reaction to all of this. You guys always have great comments. You can hit us up at X or Twitter at uh, TalkBig10. Comments on YouTube. And don't forget our website. You see the uh, crawl on the bottom if you're watching on video. TalkBig10, number 10.com. Uh, we always uh, have all of our podcasts there. We group them by teams. And you can also buy merch for your favorite teams. Coming up, we're going to talk a little bit about the Indiana Hoosiers and Purdue Boilermakers. You Indiana and Purdue fans, get your shirts, hats, and T-shirts ready. You can go to our website, pick them up, talkbig10number10.com, right there. Be sure to subscribe and follow Lockdown Big Ten for free wherever you get your podcast. That way you get the latest episode of this podcast as soon as it becomes available each and every day. And um, in addition to all these things going on, the reason we're going to look, we're previewing different teams every day, and we're going to look at Indiana and Purdue we do things a little differently today. You know, in our third segment, we usually do our top 10 Big Ten observations from the weekend. But look, this is the middle of July. There aren't any events going on. And I thought we'd uh, break format a little bit, talk about two teams today. Since they're kind of in the same boat, in the state of Indiana, Indiana and Purdue, you got all these big schools in Southern Cal and Oregon joining Michigan and Ohio State, Penn State. Take a look at them. That's all coming up next right here on Locked On Big Ten. Passion, drive, and patience. It's the formula for winning championships. It's also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need and all the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit only available to U.S. customers. Thanks for making Lockdown Big Ten your first listen each and every day. Check out the whole Lockdown Network. We got every team, every conference, everybody covered. Uh, when you're done with us, you can check them out as well. But we love you, everydayers. You're what makes us go. Thank you very much. Meanwhile, be sure to subscribe on YouTube, share, follow, and like Locked On Big Ten wherever you get your podcast. Lockdown Big Ten, your team every day. And don't forget to check out our podcast as well for all of our podcasts, our, our website for all of our podcasts in order and merchandise as well. Talk Big Ten. That's the number 10. TalkBig10.com. As we continue to look at every Big Ten team and their upcoming football seasons, I want to talk about schools like the Indiana Hoosiers or Purdue Boilermakers for a minute. Um, you know, whether the you know, whether the two schools there in the state of Indiana can continue to compete in a conference like the Big Ten. The schools already have had a higher degree of difficulty with the likes of Michigan and Ohio State and Penn State, and now they have to face additional pressures from schools like USC and Oregon. One can argue it's been tougher for Indiana than, say, Purdue because they've actually been in the East Division, and that means they've gotten a full dose of Michigan, Ohio State, and Penn State every single year. At least Purdue got a break once in a while out in the West. But as you know, divisions go away this year, and it's each team for itself. Now let's start with Indiana. They've had, they've set the reset button here on the football program. First year head coach Kurt Signetti uh, is the new head coach, and the school also seems to have beefed up its commitment to name, image, and like likeness, and its commitment to the players there. And Signetti is an, uh, an exciting coach. I think he comes with a winning background. Impressed many at James Madison. In his first year there in 2019, went 14 and two, got the team to its national championship game. Uh, but Indiana, first, second, and third priority here is to settle their long standing quarterback problem. Uh, Signetti is bringing in Ohio transfer Curtis Rourke to help lead the way. Now, he started, he's got a lot of experience, started 33 games, I think played in 36 games total in five years at Ohio. He was the MAC Offensive Player of the Year. He was first team All MAC his junior year. He could be the shot in the arm that the Hoosiers need. And the Hoosiers have been doing a nice job recruiting, getting a couple of in state kids that uh, may have recently bolted other places. So you can kind of feel the momentum turning a little bit, but it's going to really kind of see how this, uh, this season pans out for them. Let's take a look at their schedule. 
First of all, uh, let's see how many wins, wins they can maybe get here, right? They got they got Florida International opening up on Saturday, August 31st. Um, I'll take FA, uh, FIU lightly, but I'll, I think the, the Hoosiers will, will win that game. And then they got a date against Western Illinois, followed by their first Big Ten game at UCLA at the Rose Bowl. That'll be fun. UCLA's down this year. So I this may be a this may be a fair fight either way. It's out on the road on the West Coast. It could be tough. Uh, and then they come home and they take on Charlotte. So I don't know. Let's say for these first uh four games, let's say they go three and one. I don't know what happens out at UCLA, you know, road game and whatnot. Although the Hoosiers can win that game. They can. We're trying to, you know, keep things even keeled here. Um, let's say three and one, those first four games. Then they got a home date against Maryland and then a road game at Northwestern and both Maryland uh, Maryland's a little down this year. I don't know what they're doing at quarterback. We'll preview their season coming up a little bit. Talia Tonga is gone. The all-time leading passer in the big 10 and then a uh, game at Northwestern. That'll be in the little tiny uh, little uh, bleacher band box. They got there at Lake Michigan because uh, Ryan Field's been torn down. Um, let's, I don't know which one let's say they split though. They, they win one of the two. Let's split those two games, Maryland and, and, and Northwestern. All right. So now, now you're sitting at uh, one, two, uh, three and one, four and one, four and two. All right. Four and two. You got Nebraska. I'm, I'm high on Nebraska. I'm bullish on Nebraska this year. I think Nebraska wins that game. I think they're pretty good. And then Washington, I, I didn't know, I don't know. We're going to look at uh, Washington in, in next week and see what they are. Um, they're the team that I don't know what to expect to be honest, but, I do know they have a lot of talent, a lot of size, a lot of, even though they got more people on the more, they're like Michigan. They got a bunch of guys ready to go step up that maybe didn't play last year. So uh, let's say it's a tough game for the Hoosiers and they lose that one. So they're sitting here at uh, one, four and two, uh, four and three, right? Is my math add up there? I think I'm off by game. Hold on, hold on. Uh, Florida International, Western Michigan. Maybe UCLA, uh, Charlotte, split either Maryland or Northwestern, uh, and then the Wash. All right, let's say they win the Michigan State game. That's at Michigan State. They've had some success at Michigan State. All new program there, new coach, kind of the same situation as the Hoosiers. If they win it, they get five. Then they got a back to back Michigan and then at Ohio State. Okay. So now you're coming down to the Purdue game. And um, whether they win that or not, um, that's that's your sixth win. All right. So the whole season comes down to Purdue. Let's say they get it. Purdue's still trying to figure. We're going to look at them in a minute, by the way. I say six wins is a good rosy picture for Kurt Signetti in year one and the Indiana Hoosiers. You Hoosier fans like to hear from you on that. Two, three, nine, three. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll, I almost give, give you a phone number. I'm like in radio mode here. Hit us up on Twitter or X at uh, Talk Big Ted number 10. Uh, also on uh, YouTube, and uh, don't forget our website, talkbig10number10.com. That's uh, that's what I wanted to give you. Now, we're going to look at Purdue in a minute, and uh, Ryan Walters coming in year two. Disappointing last year. want to discuss that. But first, if you're watching a lot of daytime TV, Fox Sports, ESPN, you want to turn it down because you're just screaming at each other, talking to each other, uh, make the switch to Locked On Sports today. It's a free 24-7 sports streaming channel program for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming and nonsense. It's Locked On Sports Today, bringing you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news, streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Now, you know going in our third segment on a Monday, we usually do Big Ten Top Ten Observations. Again, not a lot going on schedule-wise with the Big Ten uh, sports world right now. It's the middle of July. I want to get in another football team and talk about them here. So we're going to do the Boilermakers, kind of in the same boat, as the Hoosiers, they're one year further down with a new coach. They're into year two. Can they compete with the big boys? They got a pretty tough schedule as well. So I want to talk about all of that in one minute right here on Locked On Big Ten. Let's continue looking ahead at the upcoming season with everything that's going on in the Big Ten. We just talked about the Hoosiers. Let's talk about their neighbors to the north and the Purdue Boilermakers and uh, figure out where they're at here because I, I think they're an interesting story. I really do. Um, we'll start it off. You know, Ryan Walters landed the head coaching job last year 
Had a great stint as Brett Bielema's defensive coordinator at Illinois. He's only 38 years old. He's considered one of the rising stars among the coaching fraternity. And last year was tough, though, for the Boilermakers. They limped to a 4-8 and eight record. And to be honest, I thought quarterback Hudson Card, who transferred from uh, Texas behind Quinn Ewers and Arch Manning, I thought Card would, would have a bigger year than he did. It was okay. I just I thought it would do better. Maybe now with a full year under his belt, he can kind of step up and take that next step up that we expected. But Card lost his favorite target. The team's best receiver, Deion Burks, is gone. 47 catches, seven touchdown passes. He hit the transfer portal. He's out at Oklahoma now. Uh, he can have some help, though, from a pretty good running back in Devin Mockaby. It's a good running back. In fact, he made our top 10 list of running backs uh, when we were ranking them last week on our podcast. You can go back and check that out at Lockdown Big Ten or on our website, talkbig10number10.com. Ryan Walters, being a defensive-minded coach, you're going to have to shore up this defense. They got torched to times last year. and I, But he does have one of the most intriguing players in the Big Ten on defense, and that is sophomore safety Dylan Theanemann. Dylan Theanemann. Remember this name. If you didn't watch much of him last year, you, you missed out. It's gonna be a, he's going to be a great player. He already is. It's a local kid from nearby Westfield, Indiana. Played all last year as a true freshman. Just stepped up and started hammering people. In fact, he was the big time, uh, Big Ten freshman of the year. And um, the USA Today, Big Ten newcomer of the year. And as we noted repeatedly on this podcast throughout the season, because we keep track of these things that we tell you about, he was the first... Um, First defender in league history to win Big Ten Freshman of the Week five times. There's only 12 games. He won it five times. He played, he started all 12 games, by the way. I'm very high on this kid. He led the team in tackles and he ranked third in the country with six interceptions. Another big year from him really helped this uh, Boilermaker defense turned things around. And this kid's got to get even more national attention than he does. He is worth it. He is really good. So with that as the backbone of the defense that needs some help this year, let's take a look at this 2024 schedule for the Boilermakers. It does include Notre Dame, Ohio State, and Penn State. That's tough right there. There's three of your 12 games that are pretty tough. All right. They open it up uh, August 31st. That's a Saturday. A lot of teams opening up their season on that day, and they host Indiana State. That's a 12 o'clock game on the Big Ten Network, by the way. Let's say they get the win there. All right? The next week, got a tough game. Got Notre Dame coming. Notre Dame coming to West Lafayette. That place will be pumped. Notre Dame should win that game, by the way. It's 3.30 Eastern on CBS. Notre Dame should win that game. Purdue will give them all kinds of uh, effort. It'll be you know good effort by Purdue. I have no doubt about that. Then the next week, um, oh, by the way, I should mention that after the Indiana State game on August 31st, Purdue does get a bye. It's like the earliest bye in college football, September 7th. They're off. They got two weeks to prepare for Notre Dame. Like another reason why I think they'll be a tough game, but – Notre Dame should win. All right. So then they got the Notre Dame game on the 14th. On the 21st, they got to go all the way across the country and go to Oregon State. That's on the CW network at 830 under the lights. I, that's a tough place to play. That is a tough place to play. So boy, the makers could start out one and two. Then they come home to take on Nebraska. As I just said, when I was talking about Nebraska and the Indiana game, I'm very bullish on Nebraska this year. I think Nebraska wins this game. So they're still now they're sitting at one and three. All right, let's look at the next two games for the Boilermakers in October. Two road games. They're at Wisconsin. They're at Illinois. Those are games that anybody could win. I call them 50-50 games. They can win or lose at Wisconsin. They can win or lose at Illinois. Let's say they get one of the two. All right, let's say, even though I'm a big fan of Luke Altmyer, quarterback at Illinois, let's say they get the Illinois game. Maybe they lose up at Camp Randall. They finally get their second win of the season at Illinois on October 12th. Next is a home date against Oregon. That's going to be brutal. Home game against Northwestern. Let's say they win that one. It's at home. 
All right, let's say they went there. They got three wins right there. Then they're at Ohio State. That's not going to happen. Then they host Penn State. At least it's at home. Penn State's going to win that game. So now you're at Michigan and at Indiana to close out the season. So you got three wins. I don't know if you split those two or if you win those two. I I, I think Michigan State wins. So it comes down to the Indiana game. Are you a four-win team this year at Purdue if you get that game? Three, four, maybe five if you get to Michigan State. That's your window for Purdue, three to five win, which is disappointing for Ryan Walters going into year two, right? It's disappointing. I'm sure he wants to do better than that, but this may be a, a, a hiccup before a year three spike. Well, it's going to be a tough year for the Boilermakers. Anyway, that's my assessment. Again, love to hear from you there. Hit me up on X at Twitter at TalkBig10, number 10. Also on YouTube, don't forget the website, TalkBig10 with the number 10.com. Uh, we talk a lot about Indiana and Purdue. If you're an Indiana fan or Purdue fan, go ahead and get your Indiana and Purdue merchandise, hats, shirts, T-shirts, pennants, cups, coffee mugs, all right there. TalkBig10, number 10.com and check it out. Uh, in the meantime, Locked On has launched the first ever National Sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube called Locked On Sports Today. And it covers 24 sevens right there, covering uh, all the sports, all the leagues, all the teams going on from all the local experts at Locked On. Locked On Sports Today on YouTube. You can subscribe there after you're done here. It's the first ever National Sports 24-7 streaming channel. Feel free to catch another episode, though, of Locked On Big Ten. Uh, and check them out. And I can't wait till we talk tomorrow. We're going to keep an eye on this expansion and realignment stuff. It's always big for us here. And we're going to look at the Nebraska football program next as well. I've mentioned it two times today, how high I am on their season. So tell your friends out there in Husker country, we're going to be talking about them at length tomorrow right here. Spread the word. Find a Big Ten friend or alum. Tell them we're out here each and every day. That'll do it. Can't wait till we meet again tomorrow. Thank you for your visit here today. I'm Craig Sheeman for Locked On Big Ten. See you next time.